Chapter 39 Unfounded Reports Several times during the past winter, 1888-89, I have met the report that during the conference at Minneapolis, Sister White was shown that the judgment, which since 1844 had been passing upon the righteous dead, had now begun upon the living. This report is not true. A similar rumor which has been afloat for about two years originated in this wise. In a letter written from Basel, Switzerland, to a minister in California, I made a remark substantially as follows. The judgment has been over forty years in progress on the cases of the dead, and we know not how soon it will pass to the cases of the living. The letter was read to different persons, and careless hearers reported what they thought they heard. Thus the matter started. The report from Minneapolis arose from someone's misunderstanding of a statement to the same effect as the one quoted from the letter. There is no other foundation for either report than this. Secondly, report has it that a minister now living has been seen by me in vision as saved in the kingdom of God, thus representing that his final salvation is assured. There is no truth whatever in this statement. The Word of God lays down the conditions for our salvation, and it rests wholly with ourselves whether or not we will comply with them. Says the Revelator, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father, and before his angels. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also, being led away, with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love and one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Here we have the Bible election plainly stated. Here are specified who shall be crowned in the city of God, and who shall have no part with the just. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. The third report states that in the conference at Minneapolis, Sister White confessed that in some of her remarks at that meeting she had been in error and had manifested a wrong spirit. This report also is wholly without foundation. I could not forbear giving to the conference the light that God had given me, this I presented both in messages of warning and reproof, and in words of hope and faith. But nothing spoken by me at that meeting has been taken back or confessed to be wrong. I still view matters from the same standpoint, and am of the same mind as when at Minneapolis. All the dangers which I then saw, and which brought such a burden upon me, have been more clearly developed since that meeting." As I become more fully acquainted with the condition of our churches, I see that every warning given at Minneapolis was needed. The influence of this report from Minneapolis tended to destroy confidence in all reproofs and warnings given by me to the people. One example of this I will here relate. A sister connected with one of our missions had been reproved for her wrong influence over the young people with whom she was associated. She had encouraged a spirit of lightness, trifling, and frivolity, which grieved away the Spirit of God and which was demoralizing to the workers. When the report came by letter from Minneapolis concerning Sister White's wrong course, 
which called for a confession there, the relatives of Sister T at once remarked, Well, if Sister White was wrong in regard to matters in the conference at Minneapolis and had to confess this, she may have made a mistake as to the message she gave my sister and may have to confess that also. And they justified the wrongdoer in her course. Since that time, however, Sister T has acknowledged the wrong for which she was reproved. Those who originated and spread the report have exerted an influence to embolden wrongdoers in rejecting reproof, and souls have thus been imperiled. Let all who have engaged in this work beware lest the blood of these souls be found upon them in the great day of final judgment. The cases mentioned will serve to show how little reliance can be placed upon reports concerning what I have done or taught. During my labors in connection with the work of the Lord, I have not made it a practice to vindicate my own cause or to contradict reports that have been put in circulation in regard to myself. To do this would occupy my time to the neglect of the work which God has appointed me. These matters I have left to Him, who has a care for His servants and His cause. But I would say to my brethren, Beware how you give credence to such reports. The Savior bade his disciples, Take heed therefore how you hear. And he speaks of a certain class that hear and will not understand, lest they should be converted and be healed. Again he said, Take heed what you hear. He that is of God heareth God's words. Those who listened to the words of Christ heard and reported his teaching just according to the spirit that was in them. It is ever thus with those who hear God's word. The manner in which they understand and receive it depends upon the spirit which dwells in their hearts. There are many who put their own construction upon what they hear, making the thought appear altogether different from that which the speaker endeavored to express. Some, hearing through the medium of their own prejudices or prepossessions, understand the matter as they desire it to be, as will best suit their purpose, and so report it. Following the promptings of an unsanctified heart, they construe into evil that which rightly understood might be a means of great good. Again, an expression perfectly true and right in itself may be wholly distorted by transmission through several curious, careless, or caviling minds. Well-meaning persons are often careless and make grievous mistakes, and it is not likely that others will report more correctly. One who has himself not fully understood a speaker's meaning repeats a remark or assertion, giving to it his own coloring. It makes an impression on the hearer just according to his prejudices and imaginings. He reports it to a third, who in turn adds a little more and sends it forward, and before any of them are aware of what they are doing, they have accomplished the purpose of Satan in planting the seeds of doubt, jealousy, and suspicion in many minds. If persons listen to God's message of reproof, warning, or encouragement while their hearts are filled with prejudice, they will not understand the true import of that which was sent them to be a savor of life unto life. Satan stands by to present everything to their understanding in a false light. But the souls that are hungering and thirsting for divine knowledge will hear aright and will obtain the precious blessings that God designs to convey to them. Their minds are under the influence of His Holy Spirit, and they hear aright. When hearts are purified from selfishness and egotism, they are in harmony with the message God sends them. The perceptions are quickened, the sensibilities refined. Like appreciates like. He that is of God heareth God's words. And now to all who have a desire for truth, I would say, do not give credence to unauthorized reports as to what Sister White has done or said or written. If you desire to know what the Lord has revealed through her, read her published works. Are there any points of interest concerning which she has not written? Do not eagerly catch up and report rumors as to what she has said.